Welcome back. We're so excited that you're here and we're excited because we're going to finally get some of the things that we've been planning to do done in the yard. I mean, we're all super excited about the spring because it's just basically right around the corner. But I have this one last area to really go through and weed out and trim back some of the shrubs and then obviously take out the tulips that have been absolutely beautiful but it's time for them to be pulled because here like i was telling you before we treat them like an annual so we're going to take care of that this is the time of year where we're really spending time in our garden and going through and preparing i have ben here with me today so he's going to be helping me go through and weed some of this area take care of the yard work the grass and i'm going to be handling this hot mess that i've been putting off for a very long time because I don't know if you're like me. I'm sure you are. And if you are, comment, please let me know. Do you let things go in the garden because you get super busy and then it ends up being like pushed down on the calendar and then pushed down. And then before you know it, you put things off in the garden for a while because you get too busy. I mean, I have a full-time job. I'm working as a teacher all the time. And, um, that requires a lot of extra time after school and by the time the weekends come around we have other things going on so sometimes it gets pushed off i mean don't get me wrong i love getting out in the garden because to me it's like free therapy you know you feel great you get things done you see the reward when you're finally finished and it's just so rewarding to do that and you know the the plants they don't talk back to you so <laughs> That's why I love being in the garden. It's definitely one of my main loves and I've really grown to love it even more. I've always done it my whole life, going way back to when I was a young kid, gardening at my mom's house and my grandma teaching me different things about gardening. And it's so fun to really get in my own garden and spread that joy with my family. And uh, that's why we're that's what we're looking forward to doing today. So we're going to get started. We're going to take you through the process. You're going to see me weeding a big, giant, hot mess out that I've been putting out for a long time. But this is a real situation. I mean, I know that I could have it absolutely perfect for you every, t every single time I show videos. But I think it's kind of cool to be realistic because all of us, we have this. And so, you know, weeds are a real thing. And we're just going to go ahead and take them out and then show you what it looks like afterwards. So let's get to work. Thank you guys for being here again. We hope you enjoy. We'll see you in a few minutes for the tour of what it looks like at the end.
Okay, the hard work is all finished, and I'm so glad because that was a lot of work. So much more work than I anticipated. That's why we took two days to finish that last section of the yard. And I'm really glad that we started a long time ago with this side of the yard because if we had tried to do everything in one day, it would have been pretty overwhelming. Ben and I really tried to get everything finished so that we could be really prepared for our spring season that's coming up very soon. But now that it's over, now that it all is finished, we can start by talking about what is growing in the yard right now because there's a lot actually. So let's start by giving you guys a little bit of a garden tour like we talked about at the beginning. And I wanna start with these beautiful daffodils right here. And I mean, can't you just tell they're so pretty? They're just blooming. This is like screaming the spring. And since it just turned spring just a couple days ago, it's really nice to be able to look out the window from our kitchen and see these blooming. This is one of my favorite daffodils. I don't know the exact um, variety that this is and if you know then you can comment because it's really amazing I mean each bloom has more than three um, buds on each one which is really different it kind of reminds me of a paper white in that a paper white blooms multiple um, there's multiple buds on each stem you have the, the yellow color and you have a variety of colors because they have the darker center and the more pastel on the outside and it doesn't smell like paper whites do sometimes I feel that those other varieties can get a little strong but the really cool thing about these is they have a really pleasant fragrance to them in that they smell like I believe kind of like a hyacinth does so yeah if you ever see this variety definitely pick that up and my favorite thing about it more so than the blooms is how it looks i mean the foliage on that is that nice like greenish blue color and it looks like a really nice grass i may come in in a couple of weeks when this is all died back and thin this out and put some on this side this way each spring i'm balanced on either side which will i think look really nice and it really doesn't take up that much real estate in our raised beds and when the raised beds aren't doing anything it's kind of nice to have something really pretty to look at especially when we don't have our annuals out yet but anyways so ben came through and he amended the soil here and i put some land and sea compost in here um, along with some garden tone organic garden tone and i think that's going to be great for this because whatever we decide to plant in this upper bed here will be ready to go. We're thinking about maybe sowing some green beans or something like that in here very shortly. Now the cool thing about putting the onions on that side is that that will allow us to plant something here and just the other day Ben came through and he planted a bunch of seeds and a seed cell system so that those are ready to go for when the snapdragons are all finished with their bloom and we can plant something immediately in there and then hopefully have this whole garden in full production very very soon all right so let's take a look over here and this area of the yard is the one area that we kind of let be a couple of weeks ago i came through and i trimmed back my roses and they will be beautiful shortly but right now i'm just allowing the weeds to grow so that i can come through and really go through and dig the weeds out by their roots and hopefully by doing that it'll allow this bed a lot more reprieve from the constant weeds that are always growing in there eventually when i weed that out then i'll probably put some annuals down here on the bottom and the roses will be in full bloom i have two iceberg roses i have a pink iceberg rose here a burgundy ice root iceberg rose here and then the benjamin britain uh, rose which is a david austin rose that is super vigorous absolutely beautiful it has amazing blooms on it and it will grow very very tall the um the best thing about this is that you cut it back and it comes back even stronger every time so that's going to be beautiful in the middle and then my gladiolas that have naturalized from six bulbs on each side a couple years ago to probably maybe 12 or 15 now on both sides and those are going to be beautiful and i really like these because they're white so whatever i plant in here whether it's the roses that are blooming or the bed of annuals 
they go with everything. And I'll see if I can throw up a video of what this looked like when I first planted these a couple years ago. And uh, yeah, one of my favorites for sure. It was just beautiful. Everything was blooming at the same time. Let me take you over to this side. We don't have very many things happening over here. In fact, Ben and I have some ideas on how we can upgrade this area and I'll fill you in in just a second. But we have our really amazing Meyer lemon right here, which is a dwarf variety which is perfect for us because if we had a full size lemon here, I don't think we'd be able to use all the lemons that it would produce. All right, so this area, not too much to look at, but I think we're going to expand our raised beds on this side as well by creating like a rectangular raised bed about right around the size of a door would be and then another raised bed lower raised bed to match the other ones in front to plant herbs and things like that maybe the upper bed will be some tomatoes or something like that where we can have different varieties maybe a regular tomato a cherry tomato definitely needs some love on this side and I think we're really looking forward to doing a new project back here in the near future but for right now we have these beautiful storm burst verbena by proven winners that i've had for probably i don't know since the early spring i found these on clearance didn't have time to plant them i don't even think i had room to plant them so i decided you know what in order to save them i upgraded them to a half gallon pot and trimmed them back and then over wintered them in the backyard kept them watered and now they're blooming but i think my main goal for these in a couple of weeks are to trim them back after they go through their bloom cycle and then underplant my boxwoods that I just trimmed back. And I think this will be perfect. I have four of these right here. And I think if I plant them strategically, it'll fill in underneath and I'll just have that beautiful carpet of lavender blooms, which are lavender and white, but from far away, they look like a light lavender. They're so pretty and they are super hardy. I mean, I've neglected these basically all winter other than keeping them watered and Look at how they look right here. I didn't really take too much care of them. And that's one of the things that I love about these Proven Winters annuals. They are bred to succeed under a lot of harsh circumstances. And I've given them plenty of harsh circumstances and look at, so great. So that'll be coming up soon, I'm sure. Okay, now we're on this side again. And I kind of was uh, putting off filming this way because we have the sun going down. I didn't want any glare in the camera. But this is really cool because this side, very shortly, we're going to have our snapdragons blooming right next to those daffodils. And we have some regular common trumpet daffodils here blooming. And these have not bloomed like this the whole time that we've had them planted here. And so they're starting to bloom. Then we also have more yellow with our super bells doing beautifully right here underneath these boxwoods that we had trimmed back a couple weeks ago in that other yard maintenance video. Looks beautiful. I had to take out the center one, but I actually have some that I have available in some pots that I overwintered. I have some tulips in a pot that a friend picked up for me in Holland, which I'm super excited about. We had those in the refrigerator um, for a couple of weeks, probably about six or seven weeks. Planted them in this terracotta pot. They'll be blooming. They're all going to push blooms, which is really exciting. It was really nice of them to think of us. Can't wait to see those. And our daffodils are all finished blooming. So what I've done is I've deadheaded those and left the leaves, which is really important. If you've grown daffodils before you know that it's important for you to leave the the foliage because if we cut back the foliage then that's cutting off all of the nutrients for next year's blooms so if you've never planted daffodils before or any kind of bulb for that matter it's really important for them to completely die back so the energy from the foliage can go right back into the bulbs and they can even Hopefully, they'll probably shoot even more bulbs next year, so we're looking forward to that. For now, it's kind of cool, like I was saying about the other daffodils. It's nice to have that different texture in the yard. I think they look pretty. It's kind of like a blue-green foliage against the other colors of green that we have going on right now. I really like that, and they, they're going to look fine for a long while. But these boxwoods, look at how they're sprouting even more so now, after probably about two weeks. Um, they're doing really, really well. So it may be sooner than later that we have a little bit more full growth on here. So that's going to be exciting to see. Okay, down here in front, if Ben can come around, there we go. We have this beautiful rose that's pushing buds on here as well. This is the Chrysler Imperial variety. This is a very, very 
old classic rose that's been around since my grandmother's time. And it's just a beautiful red rose, opens up really almost crimson red. And then over time, as the bloom ages, it brightens to almost like a reddish pink. Not really pink, but it's a lot lighter in the red tones. Beautiful and super fragrant. The most fragrant rose I have in my entire garden. Everybody knows when it's blooming because you can smell it from far away. Really nice. So that'll be opening soon. All right, and then we have our ficus tree that is been has been resurrected from the dead. Almost lost this last season, but then all of a sudden, miraculously, it fleshed out bloom. In fact, it did so well that I recently had to trim it back to give it its shape. So, so happy about this because it's over 45 years old and that's amazing in itself. I'll have to come through and weed out the bottom because, you know, weeds find their way in every crevice, but that'll take me like two seconds to do. And then we have our beautiful pink lemonade magic super bells that I trimmed back a couple of weeks ago and it's doing really well, doing exactly what I wanted it to do, which is flesh out more blooms and more growth in the top area because a lot of those leaves and foliage down here were taking a lot of the energy up and so before spring I thought it'd be really cool to give it some more shape and you can tell it's doing beautiful. I mean look at those blooms that so we have the yellow and the light pink and the ombre effect there and also the new growth if you can see right in here it's pushing growth from the top which is super exciting to see because that's just going to make it even more healthy. And just like the other super bells, when I cut back this Devil Twilight a couple weeks ago at the same time, it's blooming just the same. It's flushing out blooms. It's pushing new growth in this area. I had a lot of dead branches that I had to take way back. You can tell right in here that it's flushing out brand new growth. And in a matter of time, this will be all full right here. And you won't even see this bald spot in the front. But I mean, look at these blooms, just so beautiful. This is gonna be really exciting for this hanging basket because this season will be its third season in here, which is unbelievable. I mean, we're pretty fortunate here in Southern California. A lot of the things that we grow can be considered perennials because they last through the winter because we don't really freeze too much. These super bells in particular, they don't mind cold weather. So when we get down to what we call a light frost, which is, you know, 34 degrees, 35, they still thrive and it doesn't zap them. So they do rather well. But even though we're pretty mild here in our climate, um, they do fizzle out after pretty much two years. So the fact that we're going to get maybe three seasons out of these is really exciting. Okay, now for this area, it was really bad and it was so great to come through and clear all the weeds, trim back the boxwoods, take care of the hedge over there, clear out some of the pots that I had in this area. It's this way, it's all ready for what we're going to do in the spring. But how great is this? We have the double yellow along with the beautiful lavender in the middle and on this side as well. I was thinking about trimming that back, but it fleshed out its blooms and I can't even bring myself to trim this back, especially when I don't have very many things blooming in the yard annual wise yet. I mean, maybe I'll come through later when it's gone through its first bloom cycle, but it's not leggy and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. And it's really, really nice to look at. So that's exciting to see that. Let's talk about this yellow rose here. This is the Sunflare Floribunda Rose. I've had it for probably 24, 25 years and it loves it in this spot. I just trimmed it back and I already have some brand new canes coming up from the bottom. I let this go longer than I typically do. Usually I have all my roses trimmed back in January. So trimming this back in March is really overdue, but it's going to be fine. I amended the soil, put some new fertilizer in here, some rose tone, and it's going to be ready to go too. So it's going to look beautiful in a couple weeks. And again, it'll be beautiful because it will match all the other yellow that we have blooming in our yard. All right. Oh, let's talk about this. Here we have our little quick fire hydrangea that I had trimmed back a number of weeks ago and I think I'm going to be planting this in my front planter where I had taken out some simplicity roses that were not productive. I mean I hear a lot of people say if you have something in your garden that's not producing and it just isn't going well then by all means take it out and replace it with something else that's going to be a lot more interesting to see and something that you're not going to have to nurture along and kind of like baby the whole time because that's a lot of 
maintenance. And, you know, if you're busy like me, I'm sure a lot of people are, then it's hard to spend that extra time sometimes. And so if you have something in there that's hardy and doesn't take a lot of maintenance, then it is a win in all areas. And I think that's what I'm going to do with this. Okay. So I repotted this blueberry bush right here and I know it's not the right time to replant these because I should have done it before it fleshed out its blooms and started to set berries but when I got in here and I was clearing out this area I saw that the the um, soil had compacted to a very low level in the pot that it was in before and it was pretty root bound so I had this extra pot and I had some other potting soil. So I thought this is really the time to do it. And it seems to be doing okay so far, but I think it's going to really benefit from having more root space and um, hopefully it won't stunt the growth too much, but it's definitely an upgrade, much better pot too. So in a number of weeks, we might have some blueberries on here, which is exciting. It's always nice to grow your own fruit, vegetables, things like that. And it looks really beautiful in the winter time or in the fall, the leaves turn a really bright kind of like reddish golden color, and then it loses all of its leaves. And then it fleshes out in the spring after it blooms, really a great plant low maintenance too, which I love. I also hit that with some berry tone and I think that's going to do it some good. So I think this area was probably the worst weed infested part of the entire yard. I came through and pulled them out by the roots. Even Ben was saying it was pretty bad and I must agree. So we pulled those back, pulled them out by the roots, trimmed back the diamond frost euphorbia. I have trimmed back those things before and they come back beautifully. I think it's not going to even be a problem. Trim the boxwoods. These are more tower boxwoods into the shape that they are now by making sure that they're all the same level. But I did leave this beautiful stormburst verbena because for some reason it's gone through a beautiful bloom cycle. I mean, the plant isn't very healthy on the interior, but the outside, I mean, how could I trim this back? I'm probably going to replant this shortly but for now since it is blooming so beautifully it's kind of nice to have something to see in this part of the yard when everything has been cleared out i really love this because a couple of years ago ella had planted some peachy keen verbena in here and it's in a little self-watering container that's sitting on the on the side of our um, air conditioning unit and it's not interfering with any of the fans or anything like that, but I wanted to make sure that it was self-watering because there's no water overflow that could eventually rust out the unit. So it can kind of sit there and every so often I come through and clean underneath when I replace whatever annual I have in there. But it doesn't rust it out because it doesn't drip down onto the metal. And I, my family purchased this... Um, really pretty lattice a couple of years ago to hide the air conditioning unit that's in here because it really was an eyesore, especially when you're having a get together in the backyard or you're having company or just to even look at in general, it's much better. And when you have something trailing like this with a lattice, you wouldn't even be able to tell that there is an air conditioning unit back there. So that for sure is one of the best things that we did because those eyesores, I know we try to get rid of them. And if we have something that looks natural, it's great. So we took out the hanging basket that was here and cleared out the window box. And we have some really cool things that we're going to be planting in both of those containers once we get our hands on the annuals. I might even get a different window box. I don't know if I'm going to do that this season or next season. One that kind of goes to the ends of the window to kind of fill it out, which when it's filled with flowers and it's spilling over, you can't really tell that the window box doesn't go to the edges because it does look kind of small for that space. But it really is nice having it there each year, especially when you're looking outside the window and seeing the flowers that are blooming. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being with us today. We hope you enjoyed the last of our cleanup videos and then our state of the garden tour. There's a lot of things blooming right now, as you can tell, but it's nothing in comparison to what's coming as the spring progresses and then into the summer. I mean, we're gonna be planting up all of these containers, a couple other containers in the yard. We're gonna be working on my mom's house and I will definitely take you along with us as we do those projects. But in the meantime, thanks again for being here today, and we look forward to seeing you again in our next video. Until then, happy gardening, everybody. Bye-bye.